All right, I'm Coach Davis, the defensive coordinator at Rose Holman Institute of Technology. Here's my contact information, um, my cell phone. Um, here's my Gmail. That's probably the easiest way to get a hold of me because I'm getting a lot of recruiting emails through the my Rose Holman email. But my Rose Holman email is davis5 at roseholman um, edu or rose holman sorry dot edu. Um, here's my Twitter information. You can follow me on my Twitter account, Coach Nick Davis. I'm putting up stuff weekly um, on uh, Periscope. And then I kind of have a defensive-only account, at Spread Defense, that is only really defensive stuff, film, clinics, any of that stuff. And it's not just my stuff. It's stuff from across the country. So uh, there is that information. So what I wanted to talk about today was uh, engineering tackles for loss. I think that is something that we've been really good at for the last uh, five years. We're ninth in the country over those last five years and total tackles for loss per game. Um, our mayhem rating, which is tackles for loss and sacks, we're number two in the country. Um, number one in sacks, number nine in TFLs in total, I think it is 9.7 mayhem sacks and tackles for loss um, per game. So what I wanted to show you is just kind of our – base defense now within our base defense we're going to do a lot of stuff we're going to be three four five um six down fronts we're going to play um a lot of different coverages you're going to see a lot of different shells here um in terms of the defensive backs and uh you're going to get a lot of different movements so this first thing we're going to talk about is just simply um our linebacker off an edge and our d linemen are going to be b gap players uh, we consider this like a bare front on the snap. So um, we're going to get two B-gap players. Our nose guard is going to be an A-gap player. We're either going to, in this situation, we're, we're bringing a linebacker off the edge and the other linebacker owns the C-gap. So here we're actually getting the, the bash concept. Um, we call this um, gruff, all right? It's a gap, um, chet play. And we missed the tackle there. We'll go to the end zone. But this was nice, this game, that we thought we might get this. So he was our, our jet guy, and if the QB pulled, we were going to get our linebackers over the top here. Again, um, in this three-letter movement, which we call it, these guys are B-gap players. Our nose works A, all right? He's a C-gap player. And then these guys just play flow, all right? Obviously, if the quarterback pulled in and went back door, he's our QB player back here. And then 27 within our, our man structure scheme handles 24. Obviously, we need to finish there, but the kid retreats. And the nicest thing here as a coach is a bunch of dudes finishing for a minus 14-yard gain. So here is another three-letter movement. This is going to be against a, a GT uh, counter concept. So here are my B gap fitters. My nose guard is going to work the A. We got a linebacker coming off the edge on a rush here. We don't have to rush that guy, but in our a four man scheme, we are this, these two guys are playing flow of everything. And then a, a nice pursuit here for, for minus four. Um, I don't know if we have the end zone shot of that or not. Doesn't look like we have the end zone shot. Sorry. Um, but he's a B-gap player, but we'll backdoor the B-gap, which is nice in this situation. Now, he's too hands-on. We're not a big, huge hands-on program on a, on a down block. These are grown men. So uh, squeeze, all right? And if you get a puller, go dent this vertically. Um, we're a lot like Michigan and, and Coach uh, Don Brown. We want to dent this vertically. We used to spill. So some of these clips are older that you're going to see us spill. But now we want to... All right, dent this guy, take the inside half, use our hands, press that guy vertical, and then be able to play off, all right? And we're playing a gap and a half and be able to play off and rally to the football here. We just get some guys retreating, all right? And then guys run into the football, creating a lot of mayhem. So here we are in a, uh, I believe, a tight front. So we're in double four eyes. 
So our linebackers are our C-gap fitters. This guy is playing the flow of everything. They're a double wing formation, so we're locked on in a man coverage concept right here. But that's kind of the nice thing about our man coverage is – if these guys be blockers, then we have extra guys. So we're a one-gap defense. All right, there's our free safety in this cover one concept. Again, we're not necessarily talking about the whole coverage concept, but what we are talking about is just as many different looks to create as much mayhem as possible. But here's our four-eye players. All right, he'll work at one A-gap now. Base rule is if we're not bringing a guy, we'll tell this guy to go to the field, to the boundary, away from the tailback, to a Y, away from the Y, um, to a tailback. Each week will be a little bit different in that regard. But he's playing flow of the tailback. These guys are our C-gap defenders. You can see when number three blocks, now my man coverage guy adds in. And if you can do a pretty nice job with your linebackers creating some mayhem, you can eat up some blocks. So now there's not a guy to block this guy. And we got a ton of clips of safeties making plays unblocked, kind of in each scheme. So here we're actually going to bring our, our wheel gap stack and our three-letter movement. So B-gap player, B-gap player, our nose guard's going to work opposite. He's coming. These guys are my C-gap defenders, but they're playing flow of the tailback. Uh, we're playing a cover three defense. So here is my dent guy, all right, the C-gap defender, all right, and here is my D-gap defender here. We'll play that from the end zone. And uh, we kind of get lucky now, uh, that uh, on the guard pole that the center is really focused on the nose. Like, obviously, that's probably not this scheme. Um, but, you know, put these guys in conflict as much as possible. He's worried about this guy helping out his buddy, and next thing you know, my linebacker is in the backfield. And if he timed this up a little bit better, all right, we would probably get through. We would want more of a vertical push with my four eye because he's kind of cutting 45 off. But at the end of the day, all right, what we'll tell our linebackers is our D linemen shouldn't get double teamed. And if they're getting double teamed, it should be for less than a second because you should be at the line of scrimmage. Right now I have 40 linemen, all right? This kid by position is a linebacker, but he's fitting his gap, all right, super hard. He gets a down block. He's a C-gap defender, so he's looking to, all right, dent that. And then 45 wrapping around makes a play there in the backfield. So here's our tight front. Uh, we're playing in actually a Tampa 2 coverage. Again, it doesn't matter. How I do our shells is within the signal, I'll signal a one high shell, a two high shell, and a three high shell. All right, so for us, our coverage signal, so if this – all right, was our cover two, that is a one high cover two. This would be a two high cover two, all right? I'll put my knee up, then it's a three high. So I tell the defensive backs the shell, all right? And then from there, they need to know where they need to be once that ball is snapped, okay? If we're playing man coverage and we're playing a three high shell, well, they need to get down to their spot that we're playing a cover one defense, and that was our defense before the ball snapped. If we're playing a cover three defense, well, maybe we can get down to those spots once the ball snap because that is a zone coverage. So we'll talk to our kids about this is how this coverage should end, all right? And then within our structure, this is how we start. Some coverages allow you to hold your shell a little bit longer. Some don't. Um, I don't want to be rolling down as the ball snap playing man, but if I'm playing a zone coverage, I'm fine with that. Um, so – here we're in a cover two concept, three high. All right, my Tampa guy's able to roll down late. And uh, you're going to see we're in our four eye front. This is a freshman linebacker for us. And he should fit inside. All right, because we're playing cover two. So I have this corner. So he's a young cat, not really understanding. But I think he also, all right, I would like him to press here. But I think that is the beauty of the dent technique. If he's pressing there and watching this guy and playing football, he's going to come make this play because at the end of the day, put this guy in conflict. This guy doesn't know where he is at. So get to your job, all right? Use the, your dent technique and then go play the football, all right? Because at the end of the day, he's going to you, all right? So press him but have vision there. 
And there was my corner, all right, if we would have got more inside and dented this, my corner's coming. So the kids just got to understand where their help is in all of our situations. But uh, that's the nice thing. And then um, I would say 47 is just he's got a tempo of the ball carrier. He sees this big window, gets excited, all right, and he probably is tempo on the ball carrier. Um, but at the end of the day, all right, um, we're pretty bailed out there by uh, playing the cover two and having an extra corner. So here uh, we're getting an empty check and we're in our, our four eyes and we're just, it's an eight man uh, drop eight coverage. We're playing a lock situation with our defensive backs. And then these dudes are tempoing um, the tailback and, and run into the ball. So this is one of my favorite clips of the season of kind of uh, pursuit drill for our kids. And it kind of shows outside of this kid every day in practice, we practice our ones. So if this was a rep of our ones in practice, they're all going to run to the football. Then they get a break of the 11 guys. We don't do a ton of pursuit drill here. All right. And our kids will run to the football. Hopefully as you're watching your film, you're going to see that the kids are running their butt to the football. They'll, they'll get a break and we'll bring out the two defense and they'll run the same the offense will run the same exact play against the two defense. Some days we'll have a different call. Some days we'll have the same call for the two defense. But that's how we alternate through practice. So if we go ones, twos, ones, twos, ones, twos. And then the scout team are doing the same play two plays in a row, so it's hard for them to mess up. Some days you might want to go twos, ones, twos, ones, because if your scout team messes up a ton, that gives them a, a chance to get things fixed for the one offense. So that's something unique that uh, we do that I like. Um, and then it eliminates us having to do a 10 minute pursuit period because in our scout periods, we're gonna pursue every single time. And then it kind of translates over to the football field of our guys, uh, cause they have that mindset is at the end of the play, all 11 need to be there. So we're one unit, one team. So um, here's a look where we'll get into a bunch of looks where we'll show a five, a four, a six, a three man front and we'll shift out of it. Um, so that is a mechanism we have. Here's another three man rush. I believe with, uh, two, four eyes, we'll see the end zone. Actually, sorry, we're head up. So we got double fours. Um, they are B gap players, our linebacker, or excuse me, they're C gap players in this scheme. Our linebackers stack guys would be the B gap player. Our nose is working opposite here. My will. All right, is the A gap player, but this is a great crack replace. So that corner thinks, hey, I'm getting an under. He realizes that's a block. All right. So he probably said under, and then he was like, crack, crack, crack. And now the corner is helping in, adding in. Now that running back on the wide zone doesn't take the edge right now. And he's got to cut back up to all this mayhem. One nice thing, I think wide zone is going to be huge this next year for the offense. One great thing we've done is in our stack, I think it's hard, all right, to block wide zone um, out of an odd front because so much can change, all right, um, in terms of the second level and how the linebackers fit. Um, and even if you get reached, sometimes that's good if you got some athletic kids. Like he, he fought harder cross and, and had a nice TFL on a third and two. We'll go to the end zone here. So we'll also get into fronts where we'll be here as a five, a shade, a four eye. And I've done presentations that you can go and check out how we call all of our fronts, but to eliminate signals, all right, this is a shade, sorry. To eliminate signals, we will yell in our front and all of our fronts have families. They're all organized. We can set our front to the field, to the boundary, to the right, to the left to a tailback, away from a tailback, to a tight end, away from a tight end. So everything's kind of tight end um, like that. But one thing that we've liked in the zone run scheme is trying to put these dudes in conflict. So we're a shade and a four I, we're bringing this guy to the B gap, okay? And now we're moving here, which now frees up 47 to come make a play puts this guy in conflict, you know, they're a, a lock RPO system. They got an RPO out here. So they're kind of locking the box. And this guy is 
what do I do? Do I block 47? Do I double team 43? Put them in conflict. All right. Now 47's got a free TFL. So here is uh, our four letter movement. So the first stuff that I showed was three letter movement. Now we're into the four letter section. So four letters for us is our DNs. And what that means, it's a four letter word. So bike has four letters. It's gonna tell us that our Bob is coming, but at the end of the play, it's gonna tell us that our C gap defenders are our defensive ends, all right? Our nose guard is gonna go opposite, all right? And we're bringing a linebacker to the B gap. So for the most part, I am a four, two, five, four, three defense, all right? But we can do all those principles out of the stack. We're a one gap defense for the most part, all right, out of the stack. So here we're going to bring um, this guy, all right, to the B gap. And the nice thing I think about the stack is he gets reached. He's supposed to rush the B gap, but it's zone. He gets reached. We have another fitter. And uh, again, if you're going to run zone lock RPOs, you better block the nose guard, all right? You know, put this guy in conflict. He needs to be blocking this guy, but he's worried about the linebacker fitting because on that last play, this guy rushed. So here, um, this is my favorite scheme against zone is bring the stack backer to the tailback side. This is a tough block for this tackle. All right. Especially if this guy times it up and this guy was a good player for us. So in our system, all right, this is our best dude and I can get him. All right. We're not just a field boundary stack. I can get him to the right, to the left, to a tailback, away from a tailback, I can always bring him. And you're going to know that I'm always going to bring him because he's our best guy, but I can put him where it can create the most havoc upon your um, offense. And I think this is one of the toughest blocks for this tackle is to block a, a guy, all right, that is going to be a three technique with some momentum on the snap. Like, that's tough. And we got, like, I can show you seven clips of this kid making TFLs or zero yard gains just by he got the indicator. All right. He realized the indicator of the quarterback was a verbal cue this year. Now he's on his rush. Put this guy, this tackle in conflict. It's easy to block a three technique that doesn't move. Now block a stack linebacker. That's got some momentum. All right. That's a good player dipping and ripping there and getting after the ball carrier. So here is a four letter to the back again. So he got the indicator. So this team was the quarterback clapped and then it was on the center. All right. To deliver the ball on a, a verbal cue. I believe this was a few years ago. So you're going to actually see that center. Um, he gets the clap from the QB. The center's looking around. He gets his head down. All right. So we knew the ball was coming once that center stopped looking, the ball's coming at some point here soon. So 42 times it up. And another clip of it's hard to block a stack linebacker three technique on the snap. And then I just talked to all my guys is if it's a run play, you six guys are defensive linemen in the box. All right. Get your gap. Use your hands. Get off a block. Go make plays. Ideally, I want 30 to surf a little bit more, all right, to close out this gap. Um, this kid was a pretty good run threat, so I think he was a little nervous. But we have a ton of clips of our quarterback defender either making the play on a B-gap cutback or C-gap cutback or helping out finish the play, all right, and he's a QB guy. Here is a uh, three-man rush now. This is actually a tackle trap. This was a nice scheme against us. C gap defender, C gap defender. My nose guard is working right here. 40 is triggering because he's got an open gap. 47 is going to trigger because he's got an open gap. 42 is watching the tackle. All right, so he's over the top. Um, and he's slow over the top. And then 30 knows when his tackle pulls that he can chase this down. Now, if the quarterback read, these guys didn't, if the quarterback's reading it, 42 would be my QB guy, and that's why he's a little slow. 
we cheated at this game because we know that they didn't read it. So here we're going to bring a stack guy to the tight end. We'll go and I believe this is a uh, GT counter. So we're bringing what we thought was a guy to the tight end side. He's coming down the line of scrimmage. C gap, C gap, work opposite, rush the B. Now, in theory, all right, he's the B gap player, but he's creating a lot of mayhem because of the vertical charge he's getting and the momentum. So he's taking one, two, three blockers. All right, one guy taking three blockers because we guessed right. Again, this kid, freshman kid, go dent it. We have guys that are going to come down and play outside on the spill. Um, but he's being hesitant, kind of getting his butt kicked. But because we got have, had a guy that took out three, we got a bunch of guys that are unblocked, which is nice. Here we're bringing the stack linebacker again to the Y. DNs are working outside to the C gap. Here's just zone. Pretty good clip of 47 fitting his gap using his hands. I'd like him to be a little bit lower, all right, um, and get his head out of the tackle. But it's a pretty good shot of on the snap. We got six D linemen on the snap, and then they have a tight end. So we've added an extra guy into the scheme with a defensive back. All right, here is now we're bringing our field stack linebacker to the B. So 47's gaps the A, it's closed. Go find the next opening is our rule. All right, so the quarterback makes a good read because that guy's going to get tackled. And now 47, if he was a little tighter. All right, we got a better chance, but he's able to get hit on him, slow him down, trip him up, and a minus one yard gain. All right. 52 is over the top because his tackle pulled. Again, we're a one gap defense. And we try to tell our guys to stay in our gap. So the one thing I would tell is 54 is relax a little bit, especially on these schemes, stay in your gap for a little bit and then pursuit of the football. Um, we get lucky we tripped him up there. So we also like pick stunts. So here we're gonna pick the center and our nose is gonna work too. This is against the wide zone, this is pretty nice. I think the best thing you can do against wide zone is get reached because the O-linemen are blocking it that you have gap integrity, all right? That's how their scheme works. They think there's going to be a guy in every gap or a hat in every crack. When you get reached, all right, you put these dudes in conflict. So right now this guy's going to be in conflict. Hey, I need to go to the B gap, but this guy's coming back. What do I do? When he goes to block that guy, now he's in conflict. 47 can fit. You can't block two guys on wide zone. You can't work against yourself and then go back um, to the grain. Um, and then this was pretty nice. We didn't scheme it up, but our pick stunt. So you pick the center shoulder, work vertical, and we're able to actually take two guys because we're taking the center and the guard out of it. And we're going to end up again with three dudes kind of unblocked um, and a center in conflict and a guard in conflict. So here's the pick stunt. We're actually getting sweep away. So he comes down the line of scrimmage. He's going to pick the center. The center disappears. All right. He uh, goes and shoots his gun. All right. Misses the tackle. But he's slowing down the running back. Running back's hesitant. And our DBs ended up making the play there, which is awesome. So uh, here is a, a, a long stick. We'll get to the end zone shot here. So we're in kind of our hybrid front, all right? Is it three down? Is it four down? It's whatever you consider this. This for us is a stack backer, all right? So we're in a four eye shade to five and we walk the stack backer up. And all we're gonna do 
is run kind of a four-man rush America America's Blitz. All right, so we get a long stick down to the A. And this is great against zone, all right, because they try to combo, put the O-lineman in conflict, all right. His rule is to work to the A-gap, but there's not an A-gap guy, so he's trying to help out his buddy. That's his rules. By doing that, he leaves the guard vulnerable. What's the guard do? He can't work back, all right, and if he does, now that you're vulnerable in the B-gap. So we really like this, the shade. All right, what's he do? Does he help? All right, or does he go right now to the A? If he goes right now to the A, now this guy's making a play. If they combo here, all right, now this dude's making a play. If they combo and he works back, well, now this guy should make a play. Put the offense in conflict, especially if they're a zone. Use the rules against them. Here we're, we're shifting, so we were what appeared to be a four down front. We got the indicator, we're shift. We're actually gonna bring a guy off the edge from the opposite side. We'll go to the end zone shot. So there's the shift. We're gonna bring this dude off the edge. All right, this is six letter rule for us. That last one was a five letter. So this for us is a called makeup, it's six letters. It has an M, so we're bringing the mic. He's off the edge. He's in the B gap, he's in the A, he's our C gap defender. Okay, based on coverage, we'll handle the Y. If we're playing man, a safety handles them. All right, if we're playing a cover two concept, our overhang would handle the new gap being created. The DBs all have to understand what coverage we're playing, who handles the new gap. So here's GT, all right. We get the, the squeeze. He's got 21 in the scheme, all right? And then being a good football player. Now, again, 52 needs to, all right? Tempo, because he's our QB guy now. Tempo it a little bit. But this was pretty nice to get this on film um, because this was a, a good play in the league this year. Here, we're running our six letter movement to the tailback. Again, we can run this right, left, to the field, to the boundary, to a person, away from a person. In this situation, we game planned it to bring this guy to the tailback. All right, he's a B gap defender, he's an A gap defender, he's a C gap defender. My safeties will make us right um, in our gap. So he's got the D gap here. My other safety is gonna have the C. This kid actually was in an NFL camp. He was a great player. So they're they're running maybe a mid zone and they're locking it. Cross his face, put that guy in conflict. 52 is my quarterback player. Once the quarterback doesn't have the football, pursue. And there's your QB guy making a tackle for a loss for minus one. Here is uh, our stack. We're going to bring this guy off the edge. Six letter movement. Work one gap inside. All right, to the A. I believe this is going to be wide zone. And this is a great example of get reached. All right. If your gap sound in your program, all right, but scheme wise, you get reached. Like this kid got reached. Great. All right. Um, he is the B gap defender. He's the C gap defender. All right. And you're going to see it creates a lot of conflict. This kid doesn't know what to do. All right. But kind of the best thing for us on the backside is my B gap defender. All right, there's your B gap. It's gone. Okay, run to the football. This backside linebacker has made a lot of plays in the scheme. 27, we're playing man here. So he's got the tight end. So he's got that gap, but he's a football player and he sees QB handed the football off. It's not a bootleg and he's going to pursue. All right. Um, once he figures out what's going on, he's probably worried about the bootleg. But it's hard, I think, to run outside zone against the stack. It really is. Here, we're going to go six letters away from the tight end. So we're going to bring this guy off the edge. This is actually our young kids trying to preserve a shutout at the end of the game. So we're going to bring this guy off the edge. Now, the important thing is his rule is you're a B-gap defender. If you get down blocked, you can backdoor and be a B-gap player. If you get reached, all right, you can rip into the B. 
In this situation, he gets down blocked. So now we get a dent guy, all right? And he's got to get vertical, all right, and, and take 79 out of the picture. And if he got vertical and t took 79 vertical back, maybe we take the T out of the GT. Then our, our nose makes a heck of a play. Redirects, chasing down the line of scrimmage. All right, a minus three yard um, gain with the young cats at the end of the game to preserve a shutout. So now I want to talk about our, our four down, what we've done to create some great matchups for us. So everyone does this, all right? Um, but we're just taking our, our nose guard and our tackle, and we're going to exchange one gap with them which we really like versus zone, all right, inside zone and, and outside zone. You're going to see how the movement creates some havoc here, creates some mayhem. This guy is going to be unblocked. Okay, double team that, Greg. Great, because now we got this guy unblocked. This guy, all right, they whiff, and we ended up getting three unblocked players on a scheme where only one guy should be unblocked. So that's – I think that's pretty good for the defense. Here, I think we're going to get outside zone um, over here to the um, your left or your right. I guess the defense is right. All right, so we get reached by design, putting this guy in conflict. So is he helping out on the wide zone or the mid zone, whatever you want to call it? Well, now 40's got a better angle, and it's hard for this guy to block 40. We've taken their rules, we've used them against them, and we're able to get some havoc, all right? And then you get guys that play hard every snap, and some good things can happen that aren't necessarily the best thing on a chalkboard, all right? Sometimes I'm going to lose chalk wars, all right? But our, if your kids play hard, they run to the football, you're going to give yourself a chance in every game. Here, all right, we're working actually into the zone, so they think they're going to, you know, get a double team. Now we've worked into the zone. We got a, a tight arm over. And in a scheme where only one guy should be unblocked, we end up with three again. Here is a quarterback um, white zone, I think. Or no, sorry, quarterback uh, power trap. And we're exchanging here. We're actually running an, an India stunt. So this guy's working vertical and our five techniques coming underneath. 40 is the C-gap defender. We're doing the same thing on the other side. So this is a cover zero pressure for us. Um, 31 owns the tailback, which is nice when uh, you call this and you're getting a quarterback run. Creating a lot of mayhem right there. So here is just, I believe it's going to be just the T on a one-man exchange. Again, nothing crazy. Everyone has this, but use this to your advantage. So there's the T, all right? We end up getting a, a GY, I think, counter. Now the center who thinks, hey, I got a three technique, that's going to be a further down block. Now he's at the point of attack, and he's kind of bottled up in, in the backfield and then here's a great example. This is our stack linebacker. We were spilling in it this year, but man, if this guy can take two, you got an unblocked player. There's one unblocked guy. Here's another unblocked guy. And there's that nose guard you moved on your little one man exchange, finishing up in the backfield for a minus two yard play. Here's another example of a, um, just a, we call this a Turkey because this guy is our tackle. So whether he's lined up in a two eye, it doesn't matter. He just knows in the playbook that he's our tackle. He's going to one man exchange. Here's wide zone. So they cut, which is awesome because now in the playbook, you've taken these guys out, but what you've done and it's a little choppy is you've allowed 41 to be the backside guy unblocked. So we got a free hitter, no matter how great you had this blocked on the backside. Now we have a linebacker running. 
It's an unblocked guy that runs the football. Here is against uh, GT. And we, we actually got our butt kicked in this game on this play. We got to the fourth quarter, and uh, we put a, – it was senior day. It was our conference championship. We put some seniors in the ball game, and we asked them to do what we had had our starters. We asked our starters to do all game, chase down and make a play on the tailback. And uh, finally in the fourth quarter, the, the seniors that didn't play a ton actually did what we asked them to do. And uh, good results um, happened there, minus three yard stop there. So here is our Mexico stunt, which Coach Stanton, on, um, he's going to have done a presentation by the time this airs on our Mexico stunt. So if you're interested in that, you can go back to my page and look about the stunt. But both guys are going to go pick the center. So when he shows up first, all right, this guy is going to pick and work vertical, and he's going to exchange. Now, 51's not doing a great job here of helping out 53. He should be targeting this shoulder, all right, blasting this guy and working vertical. But this is nice against zone. I really like it against gap schemes as well. But it's putting these dudes in conflict because now you're getting an interior twist. What do they do? Do they block the rules? Um, do they go rogue and do their own thing? And there you go. The front side guy on the zone that is working back door on the cutback makes the play. So on a play where there should be only one unblocked guy, we've created an opportunity where we have really a good situation, a good situation, and obviously another good situation there. And then a bunch of guys adding in on third and three for a minus three um, yard play. Here we're going to run it, our pick stunt right here. And this is against power. Get to the center. All right, pick them, work vertical. And that's the front side guy on, on a power scheme, interior guy making a play. It's hard for this guard to block him. And actually, if this guard does a good job with some momentum, it helps us out because he helps us push ourselves into the center. We're going to post on that shoulder and work vertical. And then obviously, if you can do a great job on the tight end, we're taking this guy is taking two. So we're unblocked here. We've taken two. All right. So we got a free hitter. We're going to have another free hitting safety coming down late. So we're in a really good situation against the, the power run. Here it is. Uh, here it is again. This is going to be a, I think, like a gruff toss concept. So your bash toss concept. So this guy's upfield. So the quarterback's faking the pitch, and he is the, the power runner. All right, inverted power. And this is a great clip of this guy blasts the center, which allows my backside guy to work. And I love this concept because in this concept against a power team, all right, if he blasts him and gets vertical, you're going to gain an extra guy. And there we, there we are, all right? We've gained an extra dude that's going to be unblocked. There's your quarterback player. Here we're going to run a, uh, a pinch concept against the, the bash zone, and we're actually playing, I think, a, uh, a cover two concept to the boundary. So our corners are D gap defender, but we're going to pinch our defense alignment. All right. Pinch, pinch. All right. This kid MAs, he needs to pinch. This kid is a pinch player, but he understands that if that guy is down, he can backdoor his gap. And then in this scheme, this kid was our, uh, our running back guy and our linebackers. We're going to play the QB. So here is a uh, concept of now we are just going to have no movement, but what we're going to do is try to create some mayhem with our front. So we're in double threes here. And here's sweep. So we'll run double threes, double two eyes, probably more than really anyone I've seen because my thought philosophy is you're going to see a three and a two eye. Um, generally, a lot of teams will play three to a tight end. So I don't want the offense to know what we're going to be in. So we can be double threes, we can be double two eyes, we can put the three to the tight end, we can put them away from him. Um, we're going to be in all of our three down. 
So at the end of the week, you're going to have had to have practiced against odd stack, the tight front, a tight front to one side. You're going to practice against double threes, double two eyes, a three and a two eye. So maybe I have limited what you're going to do because you don't have time to practice against all those fronts. Um, so that is my thought philosophy here. We'll always have a different plan each week, whether we're going to play a, a seven, which I say as outside a six or a six eye or a five technique. And then within the game, this guy has the option based on what the situation is to determine what he's going to do. He just has to be on the same page with our defensive back to allow him to know what gap that guy has. So here's sweep. All right. And then there's 16. That makes a heck of a play getting off a block of a running back. We're out gapped because they have an, an extra dude in the backfield, but they make a great play and we get guys running the football. Here's an RPO stick situation. We're in our double threes. All right, putting these guys in conflict. Okay, 18's unblocked now. So they're running the zone lock. They handed the ball off because we're playing cover one and everything's covered. Now 18's unblocked at the point of attack. Here, this is a wide zone against North Central against the double threes. This is one of the best things we've done is just this guy being a linebacker. It's hard to reach this kid because he's a good athlete. And on paper, man, we're wrong. Um, 92's reached, 43's reached, all right? But now we've got guys to work against the rules. So when offensive linemen are working against the rules, now you're gonna have people hustling from the backside that are able to create some plays. Here were double three techniques uh, against a power concept. I'm not sure um, why they blocked it this way, but maybe the this kid thought um, he was it was powered the other way and he was the hinge block, so an MA on the tackle. But maybe they were confused by the scheme. I don't know. Minus two yard run on first and ten. Those are those are awesome. So now I'm going to show you double two eyes. And this has been great for us, especially against the zone. Just put guys in conflict here. Um, here we're getting an actual uh, a pull, but now 92 is at the point of attack. 33, which 92 getting vertical has kind of helped 33 dent. 33 gets his dent, and now 18 is unblocked. So anytime they're, they're going to pull someone and leave the linebacker unblocked, that's a good thing. Um, also a nice thing is anytime – that a running back's gonna block a safety rather than a linebacker. I like that because the linebacker should be your best box guys in this situation, so that's a good thing. If they're gonna block DBs instead of linebackers, that's good for me a lot of the time. Here is um, versus, uh, oh, we'll do Y. This is your power read. Crack, 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 replace. And the outside leverage, 16 was a heck of a player, making a nice play for us. But the double two eyes, allowing your linebackers kind of to be free. These dudes are going to soak up all the blocks. There's 42. All right. This week we decided we wanted to box the puller to add another guy on the power read. And we ended up with really three unblocked guys at the point of attack on power read. Here, uh, double two eyes. Against a G, uh, GT scheme, we were spilling this year. But if your spill guy gets vertical, all right, and they don't block him, that's good for us, man. Here's against a power, double two eyes, just showing they're going to soak up all the blocks, allow your linebackers to get over the top here, create a bunch of havoc back here. Um, maybe he could cut back but we've created some havoc on the front side. And then at the end of the play, we're going to have a guy taking a shot and two unblocked dudes. And then a bunch of guys running the football. This is a nice scheme playing a, a trap 
All right, so within our coverage, we've created some mayhem. Now, this kid got his butt kicked, but what is nice is I like that you have to take an offensive lineman to block our corner, which is going to free somebody up running from behind. And this kid actually makes a heck of a play, our, uh, our D-gap player here who's stunning in on a little pirate stunt, getting vertical and making a great play for us. So now I want to talk about our um, – well, sorry, we're still in our two eye fronts. And then just getting off the football. Guard blocks. Um, we're actually in our five down front, excuse me. Um, five down front. So we're here. Three, zero, three, um, five. All right, he's in conflict. He needs to work back, but 98 got off the football, which took him. And then 92 ends up with a free TFL. Here's a short yardage situation um, in our, our bear front. So allow these guys to soak up their gaps. 47, get to the football. Again, ending up with, on a fourth and one, five dudes on – on the, the ball carrier, all right, a bunch of unblocked guys. Here, um, we're late in the game trying to preserve a shutout with some of our young cats. So these are linebackers for us. They're our B-gap defenders. Just play the rules. 25, he owned the tight end. The tight end got soaked up, and he ends up being a unblocked guy at the point of attack. This was uh, this year, fourth and one against St. John's one of the best programs in division three. We're in our five down front, just creating mayhem. This kid actually got drafted in the uh, NFL draft fourth round. Um, obviously it's not really his job, but we put some guys in conflict, put a guy in each gap, work vertical and a freshman linebacker uh, making the play for us there. And then uh, my last clip here is just in a six down front again, late in the ball game. Um, we've got some young kids in, but, how it works against a, a run. We're getting stretched. Again, one of the best things is, hey, be in your gap. I'm a little picky. I would say that he needs to have his head in his crack, but get to the ball, all right? And if you do this and he bounces outside and it's a big play, it's on your butt, all right? But make plays. If you make plays, if you have the right intentions, if you got guys running the football, you're going to do just fine, all right? So, that is kind of ways that we have engineered tackles for loss. I think the biggest thing is getting your kids to play hard. I think another component is to have multiple things at your disposable. Um, I coach offense for the first three years here at Rose. So um, I was a running backs coach. Um, I was learning everything about offensive line. If the O-linemen and the running back and the quarterback know what you're doing and the receivers know what you're doing on every single play, they're going to have the advantage. So if you can change the picture and you can do things that they haven't seen all season, it's pretty difficult in maybe three or four practices to prepare for everything you might see. So uh, although we're going to do a lot of stuff, for us, it's super easy for us to get to. We do a lot of same as techniques. Um but then we just teach our kids the system, and then if they play hard, they work their butt off, some good things can happen. And then you as a coordinator, if you call the right time to call some of these things, all right, that's a good situation. And what I've learned um, over the last five years is you may not necessarily want to scheme versus one thing because what are the odds if they run – if their best scheme is power read and they run it 25% of the time, what are the odds – that you're going to call that when they call power read. Their offensive coordinator is a good coach too. So you should have as much stuff in your game plan that is great against power read, which is good against stretch, which is good against counter, which is good against gap. And you should have your guys being able to play all those. So that's the one thing I've learned is you can't necessarily predict, all right? If you're a great D coordinator and that offensive guy's got a lot of um, tendencies, great, go after it, but man, they're good football coaches too. So have your kids ready for everything that they're going to do. Um, and have simple rules that if it's not going right on the sideline. You're able to fix any sort of problem. So again, there's my contact information. If you have any questions, I'd love to, you know, talk to you guys, tell you about our program, whatever you need. And if you have any engineering students, we're one of the best engineering schools in the country. 
please hit me up because I'd love to know about those guys.